Hi, this is Rob Graham, Director of Training at LearningCraft. And once again, I want to share with you some thoughts on ways you can use Flash to make some very interesting special effects. Once again, we're going to be using some masking effects to create, in this case, a flashlight beam, something that looks like we have a flashlight working within the scene. Let me show you what the finished project is going to look like, something related to this. And uh, it doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot. And when I move my cursor over it, it's rather black until I get down to the point where I have the letters. And look at that. I'm able to see something here in the dark. I have a spooky basement. Okay. Now what this really is, once again, we're using a masking effect and we're able to see an object through that effect. By the way, if you want to follow along at home, you can certainly go to our website at www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash, and in this case you're looking for a file called flashlight.zip. Now there's not a whole heck of a lot in this project. All we've really provided for you is this object here, which is just a filled circle with a radial gradient in it, but it will give you the nice effect that you're looking for. The first thing we need to do is we need to establish what's happening within this program. Now if you're unfamiliar with masks and masking in Flash, I encourage you to look around for a file that we've already created called Masking Basics and it will help you to really understand how you can use masking in Flash. And that's available somewhere on YouTube as well. Just look under Learning Craft and you should be able to find it. Now in this project, we're going to be taking a similar approach to your basic masking, only we want to, in essence, kind of change things around a little bit. Instead of using the mask as a hole we're going to be looking through, we're actually going to be seeing something else through this particular hole that's going to be behind it. So to that point, if we look here at the timeline, we have a layer here. My naming my top layer, this is going to be the mask. And in this case, the mask is going to be some text that I put together. And feel free, I'm going to go grab my text tool here. And uh, let me just name this one Spooky and uh, Basement. Okay. So I've just gone and created this object here. And I'm creating a color that I can see against my black background. Um, doesn't matter what color it is because when all is said and done, this is going to end up being invisible anyway. But this is going to be the foundation for my mask. This is going to be the hole that I end up looking through. In this case, however, what we want to do is we want to see an object on the other side of this hole. We don't want to, in essence, be looking at this. We want to see something past it, and that'll be the effect that works for us. And so in this case, we have an object. This will be, I'm just going to name this circle. And this will be the object that's sitting over here in our library. And what I'm going to do is let me make sure that I have this keyframe selected. And I'm going to go and drag a copy of circle out here and just put it on the desktop right here next to the stage. Okay, we can talk about what we want that to do in a moment. Now the whole purpose of this program is really to create an interesting special effect. And the way we're going to be able to do that is we need to create some sort of a program that when we move our cursor around, this object in particular will go and stick to it and will be able to be seen as we move over this area. So let's first of all add a brand new layer to our timeline. I'm going to pull this all the way up to the top and I'm going to name this Actions. Now the Actions layer in this case is going to allow us to attach a script into this frame. In essence, we want to have something that when the program starts, the program understands how to set itself up and make itself ready to work. So by clicking here on this keyframe and then going down here and clicking on my Actions tab, and in this case what I want to do is use a script that we've used several times as part of this series, and the command we're putting in is something called Start Drag. Now just to point out, the nomenclature that we use here is fairly precise. And by the way, things will turn blue when you're correct, when you're doing things with ActionScript 2.0. And what we want to do is we want to make sure it has a lowercase s here and an uppercase d, and it's all one word. So there's start drag. Now what start drag wants to know from us is, first of all, what is it we want to drag around? And uh, I'm going to say I want to drag around something called beam. Okay and I put that in quotes, and then I put in a comma, and I'm going to put in the word true. And what true tells us is that we're going to take that object, beam, and we're going to lock it to the center of the position of the cursor. So no, no matter where the cursor goes on the stage, this object will stick right to it. Okay? It's as simple as that. We're going to close the parentheses and put in a semicolon to tell the program that we're done with this line and everything is ready to go. Now there are a few things we need to do also to make sure that this happens. The first thing we need to do is we need to go over here and review this object. Now, it's sitting over here in our library. It's something called Circle, which was not very imaginative. 
but really it is a circle with a fill in it. However, in order for us to control this object here, we need to certainly make sure that it has a name that we can use it to say, hey you, I want you to go off and do something in particular. If you look down here in the properties window, you can see that this is a graphic. And unfortunately in Flash we cannot name a graphic. However, we can name a movie clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this guy is selected and then from this little pull down menu here we're going to go in and say hey you're a movie clip and suddenly it's a movie clip and the good news about this is a movie clip can be named and we have an instance name box right underneath here and what we want to name this is something that will help the script recognize what it's supposed to move around well if you remember we named the object we wanted to move around in the script beam and so that's what I'm going to name this guy here so now when the program runs, it's going to say, you want me to start dragging something, you want me to start dragging something called beam. Hey, look, here's beam right over here. And it will work accordingly. Now the interesting thing about the setup here is because we have our mask layer sitting here above the circle layer, it means that the circle layer is actually going to be behind it. As I drag this object onto the stage, you'll see that it's behind the letters. And that's exactly what we're looking for. The effect that we're going to have is when we move this object we're only going to see it through the hole that's being created by where the words that we use, I use spooky basement, in this case you may be using something else, we're going to only see it. And the effect of course is that it looks like we're seeing it with a flashlight. Now the last thing we need to do here is we need to go in and make sure that our mask layer is indeed masked. And I'm going to go in here and right click on this layer and select mask. Okay, not a lot to see. You can see our effect is working. That's a good test. However, if we go and run this program, I'm going to hit Control Enter to do just that. Once again, as I move my cursor around, not a lot to see when it's just looking at black because there's nothing to see through. But when we get to the hole that I've created, which is the words, now I can see my flashlight beam through the hole and everything looks pretty good. All right. And it's as simple as that. So once again, the fundamentals of this are just being able to put in a mask layer, which is going to be text that you can see through, and you want to use the circle object here, or name it beam, or something that you can be consistent with with the script that will appear behind this layer. And once you mask this layer, every time we move our cursor over, we'll be able to see it through the words. Okay? I encourage you to go out and give it a try yourself. And once again, if there's anything that we in LearningCraft can do to help you out while you're learning your process, we offer online and on-site training in Flash and other multimedia development programs, as well as interactive marketing and advertising technologies. And we'd love to hear from you. That's all I have for this time. This is Rob Graham. Have fun with the project, and I'll see you real soon.